In this video, we're going to continue to look at independent events and see how that shows up in probability trees. So if we assume that these are independent events, can we fill out the rest of this tree? Now, when I say they're independent events, <clears throat> I'm saying A, B, and C are all three independent events, which means A and B are independent, B and C are independent, and A and C are independent. So given that, information fill out this tree press pause come back when you're done well the first thing we know is if we take 0.6 plus 0.15 plus whatever the probability is of c they've got to add up to one so add these together that's 0.75 one minus that leaves 0.25 there but then once we have that we know the probability of a is 0.6 every time regardless of what happened before so these are all 0.6s Probability B is 0.15 every time, and C is 0.25 every time. And then just multiply. 0 0.6 times 0 0.6 is 0 0.36. 0 0.6 times 0 0.15 is 0 0.09. 0 0.6 times 0 0.25 is 0 0.15, and so on. Again, let's, let's assume that D and E, D is independent of A, which means so is E, uh, and D is independent of A, B, and C, and of course E is basically just not D, so it's also independent as well. And this time we're given this 0 0.08, what kind of probability is that anyway? Well, that's the probability of A and D, or probability of A intersect D, and we're given probability of A is 2, 0.2, and probability of C is 0.3. Finish filling out this chart if we assume independence of all these events. Well, these have to add up to 1, so we already had 0.3 and 0.2 adds up to 0.5. 1 minus that is 0.5 for B. Now, we know this is 0.08 at the end, and this is 0.2. So these two have to multiply together to get it 0.08. So if you take 0.08 divided by 0.2, you get 0.4. And, of course, check it. 0.2 times 0.4 is 0.08. These two have to add up to 1, so this is 0.6. And so that means every time you get a probability of D, it's 0.4. And every time you get a probability of E, it's 0.6, regardless of what came earlier. And then just multiply to get it. 0 0.2 times 0.4 is 0 0.08. We were given that one. 0 0.2 times 0 0.6 is 0 0.12. 0 0.5 times 0 0.4 is 0 0.2. 0 0.5 times 0 0.6 is 0 0.3, and so on. All right, let's look at a real-world example. Assume that a particular basketball player can make 85% of his free throws. Assume that each free throw attempt is independent from other attempts. By the way, that may or may not be a good assumption, but let's pretend it is true. Make a probability tree for the random variable x, where x is the number of points earned by taking two free throws worth one point each. And then here's the question. If you're on the opposing team, should you foul, should you uh, foul the uh, the player and prevent a highly likely two-point goal, but allowing the free throws kind of decision? Let's let's do a probability to help us with that decision. Make a tree, make a PDF table. Well, here we go. Uh, let's just S B is a successful basket and uh, F is a failure. So on the first free throw, you either get a success or a failure, and the second one, you get a success and a failure. Well, if he's 85% is what he makes on his free throws, and it's independent, every time he's going to shoot, it's 85% chance of success, and then, of course, that's 15% chance of failure. So this probability is 0 0.85, and this one's 0.85, and that one's 0.85, and all these others of failure are 0.15. Multiply 0 0.85 times 0 0.85, it gives you 0 0.7225. 0 0.85 times 0 0.15 is 0.1275 for both of these two. And 0 0.15 times 0 0.15 is 0 0.0225 down here. The, the, if he gets zero points, he's got to miss and miss, and that only is going to happen 2.25% of the time. Probability gets both free throws is 0.85 times 0.85, which is 72.25%. And the probability that he's going to get one point is 
uh, well, 0.1275 plus 0.1275, which is 0.255, which is 25.2 or 25.5 percent. Now it turns out if you want to find the average number of points, you're just averaging these. Uh, you do zero times 0 0.0225 plus one point times 0.255 plus two times 0.7225. So it's a weighted average, and that turns out to be 1.7 points. So on average, he's going to make 1.7 points. There's a 72.25% chance that he's going to get two points anyway. Now, should you do it? Well, there's some other factors to, to take into account. There's still a high probability he's still going to get two points no matter what, and you've, you've uh, increased somebody's fouls on your team. However, 72, you know, if, if the probability of getting the two-point shot is more than 72.25%, then you increase your chances of limiting their score by committing the foul, but, uh, you know, you have to decide whether that's worth it or not. So that doesn't completely answer the question, but it does about whether you should fail or not, but it gives you some data and to some numbers to help you make that decision. Now suppose, again, this same basketball player who makes 85% of his free throws, and again, let's assume that we're, each free throw attempt is independent from the other attempts. Now let's look at a one-in-one -one situation, and where what this happens is they take a free throw. If they make the free throw, they get a second free throw. Uh, if he misses the first one, he doesn't get a second attempt. Okay. Now, again, let X be the number of points that he's going to earn. And uh, let's see what happens in this situation. Make a tree and a table, probability table for the PDF here. And what about this? Should they, uh, should they make the foul now or not? Is it better or worse for the... Uh, the the, uh, team, the defensive team. Well, here if he makes, it's just like the last tree, except that if they makes a fail failure here, if he misses the first basket, it just stops. You don't get a second shot. So that 0.15 is for the whole path there. Uh, but this part of the table is the same. So notice the probability that he gets a two points is still 72.75. It doesn't change that. But it, it does change the probability of zero points and one point to be 15% for zero points and 12.5% for one point. It does also change the average 1.57 points. A while ago, let's see, it was 1.7 points on average this way, and now this one is 1.57. One so in this, this case, you still got the same things to consider. Uh, about whether you should actually foul or not, but it does have a little bit lower expected value this time, so it's a little more advantageous to foul in this situation, but it's not, it's, there's still other factors to consider.